Hello everyone, this is Ken Braddy. I'm LifeWay's Director of Sunday School, and this is the second lesson in a series that we have titled, Dealing with Messy Relationships. Last week, we looked at the first trait that every believer needs if they want to have healthy, unmessy relationships, and that was the trait of love. Today, we're going to take a look at the second trait that believers should exhibit in their relationships, and that is, to be encouragers and to be a source of encouragement for others. I hope that you have someone in your life who is an encourager, maybe just that natural encourager, and, and they lift you up, they make you feel great, they always have your best interest in mind. Maybe that's a great friend that you've got, and you would say, that's the person in my life who naturally encourages me. It might be that you've got a really great boss, maybe it's that person. It could be someone much closer to home, maybe a, a husband or a wife. It could be, uh, it could be someone in your uh, immediate family. But I hope that you've got somebody that you could say, they are a natural encourager to me. Because, you know, we always can use a good daily dose of encouragement. Life's hard, and we need people around us that will encourage and lift us up. You know, my son, Ryan, is a huge Nashville Predators fan, our hockey team. And he loves going to the games. The games are loud. The home crowd here in Nashville is just absolutely nuts about their Nashville Predators. And he loves going to the game because the Nashville Predators, when they play at home, absolutely have the home field advantage. And that's because the fans love to encourage their team and to push them on to victory. So our lives and our relationships, you know, they can grow weak without encouragement. But there's a Bible character whose name was Barnabas, and he was a natural encourager. And we're going to take a look at a glimpse from the uh, book of Acts, and we'll see a few instances where Barnabas was a tremendous encouragement to another famous person in the scripture. Well, Bible Studies for Life always has one main point, one big idea that if we can remember this as we live this out and as we move beyond this Bible study next week, let's just remember that encouragement strengthens relationships. Let's remember that. That's the main idea in this Bible study. Well, Bible Studies for Life is divided into three sections of Scripture as we study the Bible in our groups. And so the first section of scripture comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 26, 7, and 8. And here's what the scripture says. It says, when he arrived in Jerusalem, this is, we're talking about the apostle Paul, who at this time, his name was Saul, the arch enemy, the persecutor of the church. It says that he tried to join the disciples. This is after his Damascus Road conversion when Jesus Christ called him on the road to Damascus and made him a disciple, brought him into the fold of the disciples. And it says that as he tried to join the disciples, they were afraid of him since they didn't believe he was a disciple. Barnabas, however, took him and brought him, that Saul, to the apostles, and he explained to them how Saul had seen the Lord on the road and that the Lord had talked to him and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. Saul, in verse 28, it says, he was coming and going with them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. And so, you know, some things can be, you know, the old adage, some things are more caught than taught. And it seems like this is the, the, the situation with Barnabas. He is somebody that is worth watching. Maybe we can watch and see how he, he lived his life and then catch and, and do what he did. You know, we can watch and see how he acted. So here's one thing I want you to, that you, I want you to see here is that we can, we can encourage acceptance. So Barnabas, he first popped up in scripture. Did you know this? As Joseph of Cyprus, you can look in Acts chapter 4, verse 36 to check that out. Now the apostles had given him the nickname Barnabas which means son of encouragement. So apparently this man had developed a, a sterling reputation for building other people up. 
Maybe he did it with loving words. Maybe he did it with generous acts. Maybe he gave the person affirming looks. But the people in the early church, when they thought of an encourager, they naturally thought of Barnabas and his nickname absolutely stuck. It was very appropriate for him. And Barnabas stuck his neck out and he vouched for Saul in front of the disciples. Now, can you imagine how different your Bible would be if Saul had not had Barnabas to encourage him and to encourage the disciples to accept him? Do you realize that Paul, then named Saul, wrote about 70% of your New Testament? If this hadn't taken place, there's a good chance that the book of Ephesians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, the book of Romans, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, all of these wonderful epistles in the New Testament, Paul wrote, and we might not have those. So we can thank Barnabas. He, we owe a lot to him for being an encourager to both Saul and to the disciples. Now, I want to ask you a question. We have been in the midst of our COVID-19 sequestering for some weeks now. And I know that some of us are, are feeling a little down. We're tired of not being able to socially interact with others. We miss our church families. But do you know somebody in your life right now who is starving for encouragement? Can you think of a person who might be on the fringe who could use uh, an invitation into your life, into your circle of influence? You see, you may never know the difference that you make in somebody else's life when you extend that hand of friendship and you invite them into your world, I want to ask you to do me a favor and to be careful and be conscious of people around you that are in need of encouragement. You probably have somebody in your life right now, <coughs> excuse me, who needs encouragement. Let's go on to the second section of scripture. This is from verse or chapter 11, verses 21 through 24. So we'll jump ahead. And here we find Barnabas uh, popping up again in the stories that run throughout the book of Acts. Here's what it says in chapter 11, verse 21. It says, the Lord's hand was with them, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. News about them reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to travel as far as Antioch. When he arrived and he saw the grace of God, he was glad and he encouraged all of them to remain true to the Lord with devoted hearts. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and large numbers of people were added to the Lord. So we find here another way that we can encourage people. We can encourage growth. Here is what Barnabas did. He, he encouraged believers to grow spiritually. You see, the, the disciples in Jerusalem sent him on a mission. He traveled 300 miles north to Antioch. That was not an easy journey. And many Jews in Antioch had embraced Christianity. And as a result, Greeks in the region, they were coming to faith in Christ. And so the disciples sent Barnabas to go check out what was going on in Antioch. What was God up to? And he was to go and look and bring them back a report. And so because of persecution, believers had scattered and the kingdom of God was advancing. And Barnabas saw what God was doing. And he encouraged these brand new Christians to remain true to the Lord, and to have fully devoted hearts to him, that's verse 23. Now, maybe you're in a season when you're starving for a good word from a friend like Barnabas. You know, earlier I'd asked, do you know somebody who needs encouragement? But now I'm going to ask you this question. Is it you who might need encouragement? Do you have someone who breathes fresh wind into your sails and who sees your potential and and who loves to encourage you, just like Barnabas encouraged these, these early believers. If not, I want you to do this. I want you to begin praying that the Lord would bring a special person into your life. And I also want you to be on the alert. Maybe you're going to be that kind of person in somebody else's life. So is there a person in your life who seems to be sinking? And are, are you seeing someone wither? And if you are, be a Barnabas and encourage that person. It would be a great ministry. Well, in our last section of Scripture, 
here in verse or chapter 11, verses 25 and 6, uh, the story begins to wrap up like this. It says, then he went to Tarsus, this is Barnabas, went to Tarsus to search for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So you get the picture. Barnabas has traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch, 300 miles. He found God doing a great work. The first person he thought of to bring over and to help in that work that was taking place in Antioch was his friend Saul. So he traveled to Saul's hometown of Tarsus. He found Saul, encouraged him again, and brought him to Antioch. And the scripture says, for a whole year, they met with the church, he and Barnabas, and they taught large numbers. And we find out here, the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. This is a great story of the early church. So here again, I find that we can encourage people to serve, just like Barnabas encouraged Saul to serve. Have you ever heard anybody say something like this? Wow, you are really good with kids. Or I really like the way you taught that Bible study. You have a way of explaining God's word that makes it easy to understand. Has anyone said something like that to you? Because if they have, that's how sometimes the Lord uses us to encourage and spur on others to serve. You know, the church ought to be one of the most encouraging places on earth. I bet you when you come back together as a church, after we're able to end our physical distancing right now, that you can find ways to encourage people as you come back together to love and good deeds. That's what the scripture encourages us to do. So Barnabas went to fetch Saul from Tarsus. He brought him to Antioch to serve. Who might you encourage in your church to step up and to step out and to serve? You see, Barnabas spent a year serving with Saul, Paul, and mentored him, and he watered him with encouragement. Saul began his ministry. He began planting churches. He began writing books of the Bible. And he became Saul, or he became Barnabas's peer in ministry, but then he ultimately went on to do even greater things as he wrote about 70% of your New Testament. See, Saul served because he was obedient to the call of God, and Barnabas encouraged him to be faithful in his work to the Lord. So Barnabas lived out that charge that comes from Hebrews 10:24 that says, let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works so we can be encouraged, I think, to follow his example, the example of Barnabas. What an encourager he was. Well, how might we encourage others? Well, how could we encourage a neighbor, a coworker, or a friend, a family member who is down, maybe a fellow church member we could encourage them to serve. Maybe it's the store clerk at your favorite grocery store. You can be an encouragement to, to somebody just as you encounter them in your daily walk. Maybe there's another person in your sphere of influence, but I guarantee you, God will bring people across our paths every day that we can encourage. It's a rough world out there, and speaking kind words and encouraging people can make all the difference. It's one way that we don't have messy relationships, and that's the whole point of this Bible study series, we want to be Christians who exhibit those six traits that make for great relationships, not messy ones. Well, Bible Studies for Life always ends its studies with some ideas for how do we apply and live out the scripture. So here are three ideas for you. You can see them right there on your screen. Maybe, one, number one, we would express thanks to someone who has been an encouragement to you. Maybe send them a note, shoot them an email, and just say, I want you to know from time to time you say a good word over me, you encourage me. That's been so important in my life. Let them know how important they've been. Number two, evaluate your life and consider whether people are encouraged by your example and your actions. I sure hope that they are. And if not, it's time to change that. Number three, encourage each other. Share ways that each person in your group lives out one or more of these character traits of the fruit of the Spirit that we find in Galatians chapter 5. Well, I like how our author, Dr. Ben Mandrell, wrapped this study up. You see here in this last paragraph, 
He said, we might not be called to ministry in the way that Paul and Barnabas were or impact God's kingdom on that scale, but we should all be encouragers, and who knows, maybe one we encourage will accomplish more than we can imagine. I believe that that can happen. Thank you for participating in this Bible study. I really do look forward to the day that my church family can be back together again on our campus, back together in our groups. And I hope that you're feeling the same thing, that you're, you're sensing just how important the people of God, your brothers and sisters in Christ, those, those fellow members in your church, how important they are in your life as a believer. I hope that we come back from our COVID-19 sequestering with a new appreciation for one another. Well, next week, we will take another look at another lesson in this series called Dealing with Messy Relationships, and we will learn a new trait that we as Christians should have as we relate to others so that those relationships we have never get messy. May God bless you. May God bless your group. You be safe, and I will see you in about a week for another session here in Bible Studies for Life.